what is the difference between a weak base and a strong base, as well as the KB values for some bases called base dissociation constant, or it's also called the base ionization constant, which is what I kind of prefer. And we will be able to write equilibrium expressions for bases that have KB values. But let's first get started with strong bases. We'll model them, then we'll list the properties and list the strong bases, and then we'll move on to weak bases. All right, so this is the strong base sodium hydroxide. So above it, I'm gonna write the chemical formula, you should too. So NaOH, it's kind of the classic strong base. And when we put it into water, it dissociates completely into ions, but the water molecules sort of like facilitate this, but we're not changing the water molecules. Let me show you the difference of the strong base. I'm gonna put a water here. We make a hydroxide ion, okay? And we make sodium ions, but we don't do anything to that water. It's just in the solution. So let me just grab another water molecule here and just kind of model out again. Um, if I have hydroxide and then maybe a sodium, it would be kind of like in there like that maybe, okay? So we get 100% dissociation, all of it will dissolve and we have all ions in solution. And the hydroxide ion is what drives the pH to be higher and makes it basic, okay? Now, before we move on to the examples and the properties of strong bases, I want to go over something unique that can happen with strong bases if they are a group two metal hydroxide versus a group one called the alkali metals versus the alkaline earth. So let's say this is barium hydroxide right here. And what happens is when you write barium hydroxide's formula, chemical formula, you have two hydroxides for every one barium ion. So when you place that into water, let me just move these out of here for a second, we are going to have one mole of barium ions for every one mole of barium hydroxide, but two moles of hydroxide ions. And that is really important when you start doing calculations with these metal hydroxides that are in group two. So for my water, I would have, you know, my um, hydroxides would be dissociated and then my barium. And again, that, that makes the pH uh, change and makes it be basic because you have hydroxide ions, but you need to keep in mind that you're gonna to need to add that into the calculation that you have two moles for every one mole. And that's why I kinda of like putting the ones in there so we know it's one mole to one mole to actually two moles. All right, now we're done kind of modeling these strong bases, but now let's go on to uh, listing them and giving the properties for strong bases, okay? So here's my uh, little list we're gonna to make together of strong bases. Let's just um, list them first, okay? So if you follow the um, periodic table down from lithium is a group one metal, and then we can have sodium hydroxide. And then just keep going, you can also have potassium hydroxide. Now it depends if you can you know, have access to rubidium or cesium hydroxide. So they're not as common, but they would be considered to be strong bases, okay? Now there are some group two, magnesium is not one of them, okay? That could be hydroxides. It could make, make magnesium hydroxide exist, but it's not soluble enough to make um, the pH be considered to be strong base. So for example, calcium does make the list of calcium hydroxide and strontium hydroxide does. And these are all in group two or the alkaline earth metals. And then last but not least, we could have barium, which is kind of the most common one, okay? And again, I just kind of crossed out that magnesium just doesn't make the cutoff to make a metal hydroxide that's considered strong. So again, this was group 1A, and this was group 2A. And you might even see that with uh, Roman numerals too, okay? Like that. Next, what do these do? Well, they are 100% dissociation, dissociation. And I kind of like to add the word into water you know, because it's all ions of sodium and let's say hydroxide if it was NaOH. They would make strong electrolytes, just like our strong acids made strong electrolytes. And then last but not least, I like to kind of add in here that these create, um, they just create a bunch of hydroxide ions and that's what's gonna drive the pH to be higher than seven at room temperature. So this is what's gonna increase the pH above seven Again, that's a separate video about, you know, why does temperature make a difference on neutral pH, but that's for another, for another time. 
but they do create a bunch of hydroxide, which drives that pH up. Okay, now next, let's move on to weak bases. So I'm going to bring in some weak base molecules here. I'm just going to use my hand, make it faster. So here are a bunch of weak bases called ammonia. Ammonia, and we'll write the, we'll write the reaction and we'll do all the same thing we did with the, the strong bases. But let me get a difference here. This is a double arrow. So this reaches chemical equilibrium. So there's my reactants. And what happens is maybe only one, okay, because this is equilibrium. And in this case, we have KB values, which you'll see are less than one. We have this lone pair here is able to remove a hydrogen off of the water and protonate that and makes it ammonia. And then that maybe is it. So we only have some products. Let's write this out. So we have ammonia. Let me actually just keep one of these of each, okay? So we have ammonia. You can do states of matter if you'd like. I'm gonna skip that again in this video. And then H2O, which you could write even as HOH. And then it's a double arrow. It reaches chemical equilibrium and it's reversible. And we get NH4, which is the ammonia um ion, and then we get hydroxide. Oh, my marker's kind of dying here. Hopefully we can make it to the end of the video. All right, and now let me label one more thing. This is that conjugate acid base pair. So this is our base, and this is our conjugate acid. I have a video on that if you'd like to watch that also. But this is the most important part, which is what we know about the KB, because if it's less than one, we kind of know that this is weaker. So we have predominantly uh, reactants at equilibrium, and we have very few products at equilibrium, which means that the reverse reaction is, you know, it's a stronger conjugate acid and it returns back to reactants. All right, so now let's write down the same thing we did, which is some facts about weak, weak bases. And I kind of have an extra weak base we're gonna talk about, which is the bicarbonate ion that I'll model with you. But before we do that, let's just kind of get the information down first. So we have those. Okay, I just lost a water molecule. That's okay on the floor, hopefully this will fit. Kind of covering up that little tube, but I think that'll be all right uh, for water. So weak bases, what about weak bases? So these are partial ionization of water, okay? Because look, we, you know, if you turn to slide this down a little bit, you took that one hydrogen on the water molecule and it was given to the lone pair on the ammonia and made ammonium ions. And then let's just go to the next thing is they would be weak electrolytes. And then kind of like the strong acids that I had in that video, just know your strong bases, okay? Know your strong bases and then, except for like magnesium hydroxide, then everything else, you know, that might be a base would be a weak base. So then these are gonna create, and this is why they're weak bases, because they create a stronger, I don't wanna say strong, stronger conjugate acid pair, okay? And that's why there's not as many products as there are at equilibrium as reactants. And again, what happens is that makes the KB be less than one. And you'll have a table that lists those KB values. Some of the common ones that are gonna be in that table are ammonia, um, another common, kind of a uh, weak base is called methylamine. You might even see one called uh, ethylamine. So a lot of times nitrogen is gonna be kind of a, a hint of it being a, a weak base because it has that lone pair on the nitrogen. But you have a couple ones that sneak in here that you might not suspect, like the carbonate ion. So what I'm gonna do right now is model the carbonate ion um, and try to show you why that can act also as a weak base, okay? And again, let me just write down the last, not last but not least, let me just write down the KB equilibrium expression, and then you can look at a table to find the value. But again, it's the products, which are the ammonium and the hydroxide, okay? Over the reactants, and we don't include water as a, you know, in the equilibrium expression because it's pure liquid, all right? So that's our KB expression, and then you could go to a table and find the actual numerical value. Okay, but let's get kind of like a little extra um, modeling in here. Let's take a look at carbonate ions, because they are in what's called washing soda. You could have it at home, and they are definitely basic. So if you check, they are absolutely basic. So what are they kind of doing with water in, in to make them basic? So let me just model it first, and then we'll draw it out and write it out. 
So again, if it's a weak base, maybe only one of them is going to act as a base. One of the water molecules then will have this, ele uh, this electron pair here will take on the proton, which again gives us the labels. Let me grab these labels. We have our conjugate acid. And then let me just keep one of these here, our conjugate base. Oops, upside down. Our conjugate base, maybe even slide these up here. Let's go like that, okay? And then again, our conjugate acid is uh, stronger, I lost my, here it is, than my weak, weaker base. And again, I know that because the KB value exists, which means there's not as many products as there are. Um, reactant. So let's kind of draw this out. I'm going to see if I can just leave the molecules maybe below and have you look at those and put the arrow down here so we can write down the carbonate ion. A little squeaky here. And water. And I'm going to write water as H2H this time. Okay. I like writing water as H2H, for, especially for bases. And then you get HCO3 1 minus and hydroxide. So charge is still conserved. My marker is not going to make it almost to the end of this video. So we have bicarbonate ion or the hydrogen carbonate ion, and then we have hydroxide. So that's why it's a base. But again, if you did the labeling, you know, we again had our conjugate base with our conjugate acid, and the base is weaker, and this conjugate acid is a little stronger. So it pushes the equilibrium back towards the reactant side. All right, well, I hope this helped um, you understand the difference between strong and weak bases. Let me just grab the notes one more time in case you're like, oh, I should probably maybe have written those down. Here they are one more time. And that's for weak bases. And then this is for strong bases. All right. I hope this video helped you understand the difference between strong and weak bases. Good luck, chemists.